journeys in India are often uncomfortable, but the desire to improve yourself is strong, and that puts distance into perspective. Young people here come to universities in Mumbai to learn. This class here is a management class undergoing a simulation exercise in terms of running a business devised by a very clever professor who runs this course here. At home, they're most likely to have a desk and computer and their families will strive to give them a good education which, in turn, will give them and their children in some time a good lifestyle. But while young Indians might dress in jeans and keep up with the latest fashion trends, they're also deeply traditional with a sense of their own national ideals once again. You might go away to university but the family home is still your base and social media and text messaging allows you to stay constantly in touch. Many are using mobile banking to transfer money back home once they get a job. These young Indians here are thinking globally but acting locally. But it's not just young Indians who believe that their products are not just good enough, but even superior to products being used abroad. Perhaps that's why herbal products are making a comeback. The hugely successful Patanjali brand was founded by a yoga master named Baba Ramdev and now sells a range of 30 FMCG products that today challenges the brands of multinationals and Indian conglomerates. Indians trust and are proud of made in India products and are telling others too. Initial hesitation has shifted to confident recommendation. And as you can see here in this train station, the sheer size of the Indian population makes the market phenomenally huge. The change in India is not just about the products, it's also about the family and their respective roles. If you're a man or woman, rich or poor, it's now not as easy as it was to define your role in life here in India. Women are free to be married or stay single, and that's significant. A young woman might pursue a career or have a family or both. But there's still tensions and there's been a backlash of violence against women in India in some places. That change is also bringing men into a modern age too, it impacts on the products they purchase. Male face washes are now popular and so are male hairdressing salons. If you're a male, being well groomed is equal to being successful. Ads reflect these changes and gender equality is a popular theme. Men and women are often shown sharing chores like doing the laundry. Other social relationships are changing too Movies like Kapoor and Sons, a Hindi language drama, now feature same-sex couples. Second marriages are more accepted. The text message you send may be to arrange a date or even a relationship that won't end in marriage. Advertising campaigns have to reflect these social developments. But in modern India, relationships are complex and attitudes between regions are different. Some hyper-local brands limit their presence to only one or two states to better tune into the local values and traditions. After branching out in life to universities like this one and launching successful careers, young Indians circle back to their communities and collective ideals. They might like to look after the environment and limit their own carbon emissions, which in turn influences what they buy. Young people are undoubtedly optimistic. They've got a new government, but Prime Minister Narendra Modi's reforms and that of his BJP party have been both praised as too ambitious and criticised as too slow. 
Since being elected in 2014, Modi has cultivated economic partnerships with world powers, including the US, UK, China and Russia. He wants India to become a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Agriculture and services still drive India's economy. With programs like Make in India, Modi hopes to rebrand India as a centre of manufacturing and innovation, attracting foreign investments. All these changes are leading to a new sense of empowerment and self-confidence in these young Indians. This university will have a mix of students. Their backgrounds will be very different. The urban-rural divide in India is giving way to another rural-on-rural -rural divide. While one rural farming village may have limited access to water, electricity and technology, another may have access to all these things, plus the internet too. The Indian government is promoting a smart cities rural program using solar energy. Ashok Das, a social entrepreneur, is trying to switch on India's rural villages. Talking to students such as these, it's easy to sense India's new optimism. In their world, all doors are open and all things are possible as they grasp opportunities their parents couldn't have dreamed of. The Brand Z Top 50 Indian Brands for 2016 rankings reflect these new lifestyles in every respect. Many government services have been digitised and the power of the internet is now connecting many, but by no means all. The corporate social action programmes in which the large Indian conglomerates and multinationals participate in reflect the new nationalism. Government regulations require certain companies to contribute 2% of net profits to charity, generally those with an annual revenue of over 10 billion rupees, which is about 150 million US dollars. Elsewhere, Unilever employs rural women to sell its products. This empowers the rural population while benefiting the company's brands. It also promotes health and hygiene initiatives for the benefit of the population. Technology giants like Facebook, Google and Microsoft have announced commitments to help connect rural India with high-speed broadband, but technical and regulatory issues still need to be resolved. India has just changed direct investment regulations to make it easier for foreign single-branded retailers to enter the market. Another surprising change has been for the government to permit much greater foreign ownership in the civil aviation, pharmaceutical and defence sectors. But it's not all plain sailing. The Indian government has rejected Facebook's offer to provide free internet access. It feared that this would give Facebook extraordinary access to consumers' data and an unacceptable competitive advantage. India's technology is competitive and one Indian firm has just launched the world's cheapest smartphone, the Freedom 251 handset. To find out more about the top 50 most valuable Indian brands 2016, just go to www.brandz.com and download the entire report full of insight, analysis and thought leadership pieces from WPP companies here in India and the entire top 50.